Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be finishing our Jasper Johns alphabet painting, and we're going to be learning about number one, some watercolor skills, and we're going to be uh, reviewing some of our vocabulary for our art words. Um, number one, we talked about repetition last time, where sometimes you repeat things but don't necessarily make a pattern. Like my demonstration here of repeating the lines of the R in different colors. I'm repeating the lines, repeating the letter, but I'm not really making a pattern. Likewise, we talked about variety and that you could have variety of color, variety of line, and variety of shape, and that variety sometimes comes along with repetition. Okay, so in my picture you can see here that I've repeated a lot of colors. Like I've repeated the greens in the background of my letters. I've repeated the blue over and over. There's no pattern to it. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just repeated. And I'm making repetition. But also along with that repetition I'm having a variety of colors because I use all of my primary and secondary colors. Okay, so we're going to be doing that in our um, demonstration. So here's my uh, picture from last time and as we move through we want to learn about some watercolors. This might be the first time that we're talking about watercolors so I'm just gonna do a very quick demonstration of what you should have and how things should be set up. Number one, you should always have two cups of uh, at your table. One for clean fresh water and one that's empty for dirty water. Then you should have a little teeny water cup that looks like this for your own watercolor mixing and washing of your brush. You should have a watercolor pan that's got red, excuse me, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And it also should have brown and black, but today we're not going to use the brown and black. We're just going to use the primary and secondary colors. Okay. Then you should have a brush, a paper towel to blot your brush on. Whenever you hold your brush, you hold it nicely like you would a pencil. You never hold it like a fist grip like this. You always hold it like a pencil and you hold it behind the metal part or the ferrule of the brush. Whenever you do use your brush, you use the tip of it. You paint with the tip. You never paint with the heel of your brush. Okay, because the paint gets onto the tip and that's where you want to touch the paper. Okay, other things. This is an empty watercolor container. You can see that when I turn it in the light, there's no extra paint or color down here in the corners of the watercolor container. Whereas this one, this yellow one right here, there's lots of paint right there. And kids always bring stuff up like this to me and say, Mr. Longren, Mr. Longren, this one's empty. And this one is not empty. You have a lot, a lot of color in there. All you need to do is get it wet and voila, lots of, lots of color. Okay. Um, to get started, you're going to have to put a little teeny bit of water in your little cup. So you want to get just a little bit. All right, just like that. You don't want to fill it up all the way so there's dribbling all over. You want to just fill it up a little bit. Okay. Then to wash your brush out, you don't need to smash it in. You just kind of wiggle it back and forth and the paint should come out. Then you have a little paper towel to blot your brush on so you can control how wet the watercolors are. Then as far as getting your paint wet, you get a couple dribbles of water into your watercolor pan and you rotate your brush in there like this, just using the tip. You can kind of see how I'm just wiggling the tip around in there. I'm not smashing it down hard, just wiggling the tip, and that should get the paint on the tip of your brush. Then you always pull your brush, whether you pull it towards you, pull it away from you, pull it on a diagonal, pull it in a circle or a wiggle or whatever else. But the one thing you never want to do is push it and smash it down. A lot of kids smash it like this and wiggle it back and forth and what happens is the bristles all get munched up and destroyed and then they start pushing it like this and what happens is all the hair then gets cut off the bottom when it hits the ferrule. Okay, so please, please, please make sure you're gentle with your brush. Make sure you're always pulling your brush so that we can keep the brushes nice for everyone. Once you have a little dirty water, you can dump it in your empty cup like this and then fill your little cup up with fresh water again. Okay, just like that. Now once we got that done, a little demonstration, we'll get started on our um, project. Okay, here's the oil pastel that I finished last time. What we're going to do is we're going to start with just red and you're going to color in a few squares red. Um, I'm thinking there are, what do we have? We have 26, 7, 8, 28 um, squares here. So I, I don't know, I'm going to say, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're going to have to paint at least 
five squares one color. So if I get some red onto my brush, I'm going to need, whoop, I dribbled on my, yellow, my L, so I'll paint that one in. You're going to have to paint one, two, and just pick random ones. Make sure that you are not painting next to each other. You don't want to paint all the same ones right next to each other red. You want to kind of spread them out and count them at least five. Okay, so here we go. We got three red ones. Notice how I get my brush wet each time I go back. Okay, you have to get your brush a little bit wet because it's called watercolors, right? So you want water on your brush when you paint the watercolors. You can't paint with watercolors with a dry, empty brush. All right, and let's see, let's go here, I guess. Okay, so there's my five squares that are painted in. Now I'm going to take this opportunity to really wash my brush out well. I'm going to dump out my dirty water, my dirty red water, get a little clean water, not too much, and try not to spill. I'm trying to go too fast, so I spilled. Um, try not to go too fast, try not to spill. Okay, And then you're going to change to your next color. And Mr. Lundgren, after you change this color, you can kind of fast forward. I'm going to start with orange. Notice I'm being careful and just using the tip. I'm going to paint it five squares. Okay, so there's my five orange squares. Then I'm going to switch my water, dump out my dirty water, get a little bit more clean water, and move on to my yellow. And I'm just going to go straight down the line all the way to my purple. So Mr. Lundgren, at this point, you can fast forward. I dump out my yellow, get some clean water for my green, and I'm going to kind of continue along with my green. Start with blue, ooh, dark blue. Dump out my dirty water, a little bit of clean water.
Okay, now that we got all of those done, I'm going to choose a color and go around the outside edge of my painting. And since I have a cool color, a blue color here, I'm going to use red and do red around the outside of my border. so that it looks something like that. When you're done, make sure that you wash your brush out really well. People's job who it is to wash the brushes, make sure you wash it on your palm. Clean those out and put them into the container with the bristles pointing up. All right. Take the watercolor sets, put them back into the watercolor set box. Dump out all your dirty water in the sink take your paper towel and wipe your little cups out so that they're not dirty after we get done using them all right and put those away and then make sure you can take your paper towel and just kind of wipe up some of the wetter areas on your table all right so that concludes our jasper johns how to make a jasper johns picture using the alphabet creating repetition by using the same oil pastels to make the same marks of our letters and to have variety of color and line and shape and have that color and line and shape of variety also creating the repetition but making it so that the um, composition looks interesting and looks fun and that's how you conclude how to make a Jasper Johns style alphabet painting